Hello, everyone. This is Masako Ganaha. Today, I have a wonderful guest. Let me introduce him. Louis Blackpool from United Kingdom. He is independent journalist and now reporter for Iconic. Uh, hello, Luis. It's nice to hello. see you again. Yeah, you too. It's been a long time. How have you been? Uh, good, good. Uh, I really, I was really happy to encounter uh, you and your group uh, in Netherlands. It was really nice to interview you there. Yeah, no, I had a great time, and uh, it was great to bump into you too. And we uh, we had a good chat and a good uh, live stream when we uh, when we done that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now you're back in uh, United Kingdom, correct? Correct. Yeah. I'm back and, here. <laughs> and I, I know like you're super busy, but thank you so much for taking this time. Uh, today, I would like to ask you about your experience uh, reporting from uh, Davos, Switzerland uh, last, I mean, this year, May. The conference mm -hmm. was held between 20, May 22nd to 26th. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's... um. <clears throat> It's a very strange place, to put it bluntly. And when we arrived there, uh, well, at the time, if we rerun the clock, when I was there, uh, I was obviously a reporter for my pre the previous company I worked for, Rebel News. And we had this idea of going to Davos to to really do some investigative journalist journalism because nobody really... We we heard of a few people that went um, from previous years, but no one was really getting to the heart of it. No one was really asking the elites uh, the tough questions and showing the ins and outs of what Davos actually looked like. So my old boss decided, right, let's start. Uh, let's bring together a team of journalists and just send them out there with cameramen and just see what happens. Right. And when we arrived there, we had um, we had some journalists there, Avi Yamini, uh, who was there a few days prior, just to scope out with his um, with his with his friend and who was uh, our accomplice as well, uh, Ruck Shan, his name was, and they scoped out the area and looked and and see and just to report back to show what Davos Davos actually looked like, and what can only be described as it looked like a, a pop-up sort of town, it looked fake. It looked like it was a seasonal thing. They would go there and just um, pop up all these random stores just to impress their elite friends. And what was interesting about the entire thing was one particular uh, thing that stood out for me was the whole theme of this event um, Davos and you know the World Economic Forum. The entire theme for May in 2022 was all about regaining trust. Now, what they meant was they knew that the public um, doesn't or didn't trust them at all, and I think they're fully aware of that. And to me, I see that as a as a very very good thing because we know about this anti human organization. That um that push all sorts of rhetoric and want to influence so much foreign pol policy from Japan to the UK to America, and for them to theme their entire summit around regaining trust is uh, well, it was quite extraordinary to say the least. Hmm. Wow! So you just mentioned it was like a pop up mm, mm. seasonal town. Yeah. So they would have um. Because during the summit, they needed to impress everyone. They needed to get billboards up. They needed to start advertising. You would walk through, and I'll send you some clips as well. You would walk through, and it looked like something out of the film They Live. You know, the guy puts on the glasses, and then he can see all the propaganda right in front of his eyes um, because it all had climate change um, propaganda, quotes from Klaus Schwab all along the strip. Wow. And... Um, it was very dystopian. So when I was there, <clears throat> one of my videos was taking everyone on a tour from the entrance to the World Economic Forum and their summits all the way to the start of it. And you saw every company 
that had sponsored or had partnerships with the World Economic Forum. And <clears throat> I, I showed on camera and done some commentary about uh, each different partner, who they represent. And uh, we even bumped into a few characters who uh, who asked what I was up to and what I was doing. And then when I started questioning them on things like censorship, um, one guy in particular, he actually ran off um, wow. as soon as I started asking questions about censorship. Um, but the video had to keep going, so I had to quickly move on. So there were some interesting things that, that happened uh, throughout the strip and throughout the time being there. So uh, it was uh, it was pretty surreal. Mm. Well, uh, recently uh, I looked up Davos Town on map and there mm. are many like four star, five star hotels around that conference <laughs> hall. And the conference yeah. uh, building itself is massive, look like. And but it's it's a ski resort, correct? Yeah, yeah, mm, that's yeah. it. Yeah, it's it's originally a, a, a ski resort, <clears throat> but during that time they like to hire hire out, like you said, four star, five star hotels. But the price of it is is unbelievable. I mean, I'm trying to think of the conversion rate. So I'll say it in pounds, and then maybe you could convert it into into japanese uh, it's yen isn't it mm -hmm. yes um so it would be i think it was per week over two thousand pounds three thousand pounds uh per week mm -hmm. uh, to even stay there so it it was it was unbelievable to see the prices because obviously planning the trip we were looking around near davos but we had to stay gosh it was hours away um we had to stay so we had to get up early get in the car make the trip through the windy mountains to get there and i think i can speak on behalf of the entire group actually we we don't want to do that again i don't think um wow yeah it was awful but um yeah with all the with all the hotels it had uh, it just had everything the elites needed you know steaks it had you know <laughs> brilliant like breakfasts and and lunches and dinners just all prepared and ready for them and what's what's fascinating about that is their mantra of wanting um, people to move on to such as a, a bug styled diet. Yet for them, you know, they can have their steaks, they can have their wines and red wines and, you know, all of any t sort of banquet they want with food they can have. So that's what's quite interesting about that is, oh, so us us plebs can uh, have to have you know, the bugs and, you know, the plant-based stuff, whilst you guys can gallivant in uh, eating steak and, you know, all these pristine uh, foods. So that's, it's more of a class thing, this World Economic Forum um, sort of circle. It's all about class. I don't think it's about anything else and selling this lie out to the public as well. Wow. So all the policies that they talk about during the conference, they actually do not mm. exercise themselves. <laughs> oh, of course. It's <laughs> shocking, isn't it? Um, <laughs> what's funny as well, we saw a, a a private airfield where all of the um, all the elites get on and, and, and they all. <laughs> so how it would work, they would fly in via private jet. Shock horror. And uh, they would arrive into a, a private airport, which would be a few hours away. And we actually went to this particular um private airport and the staff were lovely you know they they let us like you know look around and film and you know talk and do our reporting um but usually they would get an entourage so they would be met with lots of cars uh but this time i think they had to they had to find another means to uh, uh to davos itself but usually how it would work private jet in and they'd have an entourage filled filled with massive suvs and massive like limos and all of these uh huge sort of automobiles obviously using diesel and petrol which they apparently despise and <laughs> would uh would pick up these elites and then take them straight to the doorstep and where their hotel is um five six star hotels and it's just it's so funny to watch the the hypocrisy and i think that was the main theme as well we were trying to shine um the light on uh, for everyone that mm. you know they they don't practice what they preach they they're, mm. they're not interested in actually um d 
doing these things themselves because the entire World Economic Forum summit could have been done on Zoom. You know, <laughs> this could have been done online. You know, they could have been speaking about it over Zoom and done like an open conference. But no, no, they we, they would rather get together. They they want to meet each other. They want to have that conglomerate. Um, they want it. I don't know. I I, I kind of want to call it. I kind of want to call it um, a muscle flex almost. They want to flex their muscles together to show who's the strongest, who's oh. the best partner. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, it's 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 fascinating. It is a fascinating but strange, strange place. Wow. Yeah, it's now what they say on their website is like really strict on environmental policies and they are mm. like trying to change how we eat. But yeah. they they don't sound yeah. like <laughs> they're doing. Yeah. And so uh, I just checked um uh, their website and the uh, theme this year it says history at a turning point. Ah. And then... Hish- okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this year uh they're gonna have January starting from January sixteenth I think. And the hotels mm. around that area is fully booked. And of course, the price were uh, skyrocketing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and That's I wonder, what's interesting. Yeah. And, and I wonder what they are going to discuss. But uh, so you mentioned uh, you saw some important people walking mm. to the building and you asked questions. Uh, could you please share some of the story of people you uh, encountered? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so for me, the ones I, I encountered was, um, uh, I believe, the, the marketing head of uh, Intel. So when I was speaking about, I was telling you about uh, censorship. So when I was asking about, there's a lot of talk around censorship online and how, and he would just cut me off and say, can you just give me one second? And then he would just walk off. And then he was nowhere to be seen straight after that. And he's quite easily, if I show you the clip, he's quite easily, uh, you can you can pick him out from a crowd. I don't know if he was wearing a wig or something, but you can really, you know who it is, basically. Um, Intel, the technology the world builds on, and you can see the World Economic Forum right here. Right here. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I am great, thank you. you for Intel. I work for Intel. I'm the event manager. Interesting. Okay. Can you ask me first what... So I'm with Rebel News. Uh, we're going around, we're doing a tour and showing people what this looks like, basically, okay. from back at home. Uh, it's interesting with Intel um, because there's a lot of talk about... We're not in- recording, right? We are, yes. Um, so there's a lot of things about Intel with um, censorship and things like that. Can you give me one second? Yeah, sure. Okay. What do you need? i think got to get one colleague. Okay, yeah, sure, if you like. And it's almost like a, a celebrity styled thing where you've got cameras and people obviously posing between different billboards and promoting various companies. The guys run off. So that was quite interesting. Avi Yamini, um, my ex colleague, uh, but colleague at the time, he done most of his content based around asking the elites questions and so when he was walking around and trying to find um uh the elites he ran into lots of different content creators as well like naz daily who's a very uh prominent uh youtuber who's sold himself out sadly to the uh to the world economic forum and pushes this environmentalism uh to his followers and there was other people uh, head of um, the WHO as well at the time during the COVID response. Um, I believe his name was uh, uh, Carney. I believe his name uh, was that. Avi Yemeni done a fantastic job at um, at tracking down these elites and actually asking um, prominent questions. So I can throw you to, to clips of that. And what's what's amazing about that is you had so many different types of people. You had... Um, you had uh, New York Times journalists as well. There was a clip of Avi asking uh, a New York Times, the head of the New York Times um, journalism team, 
uh, she was being asked things like, do you not think it's hypocritical that you guys have been, you've been bought and paid for to come here, yet you're now not going to ask the questions that the people want asking? And it's so true, because if you're mainstream uh, media and you get offered to come to Davos to report or to do journalism there as a mainstream media reporter, you're not going to ask the the questions that um, independent media aren't or media that weren't invited. You want to ask the hard-hitting stuff. Why do you go around and say things like you'll own nothing and be happy? Why do you ask these things? Why do you why are you so concerned with um with misinformation online? Why do you want to regain trust? What's your motive for this? They 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 never asked a single question. All they did was it was a it was a circle jerk of elites it was they were buying and paying um accredited mainstream media journalists and reporters to be flown out there for a holiday for a partnership meeting it was nothing to do with asking hard hitting questions and watching um watching my colleague avi base his content around that was uh, was fantastic Rebecca, how are you doing from the New York Times? Can I ask you a quick question as Avi from Rebel News? How is the public meant to believe that the New York Times is here to actually ask the tough questions when you're here as an invited guest? How are people meant to rely on the mainstream media? We have, we, if you wouldn't mind, we're just having That's, a, have, just if you could give us, you know, thank you. You don't want to explain to people why we should trust the mainstream media? No, of course, no comment. There we go. So that's the point here is in Davos you have the mainstream media that are not here to report the truth. They are here as part of the event, invited guests with their white name tags. You had Savannah Hernandez from America was with us too. And Antifa were also there, which was very odd. It was uh, one of our first times arriving into Davos and we saw Antifa was there and they were protesting. But so we thought, oh, OK, maybe there's some common ground somewhere. I mean, whatever universe this is, I have no idea. But we went and approached them and we asked questions and they done their thing. And Avi and Sav were asking questions such as. Do you not think that what you're saying about the elites and how they're trying to implement all these draconian measures, do you not think that you're saying the same things as the right does? And they sort of crippled at that at that thought process that that they could even be associated with the right uh, of politics but their main crux of it was oh we believe in this existential crisis of climate change we believe in all of this they're just not implementing this quick enough that was their crux so they actually believed it <laughs> they believed um all of this, uh, the, that you know, the the whole planet is just going to be engulfed in a great big ball of fire, or underwater, or iced over. I don't think they've made their mind up on which one yet. Um, <laughs> but it's one of those. It's one of those, apparently. Um, but they don't believe. They didn't believe that this, uh, that these elites, Klaus Schwab or whoever, are implementing it quick enough. They want it now. So they want government control. They want. Um, they want this uh, technocracy now, which is quite incredible. You would walk through the strip and you would see all the attendees, all the uh, photographers, and it was it was all in a class system because they would have lanyards around with color codes. And finally, when we managed to figure out finally that there was a um, there was a class system in place where different colors represented the status of this person. So you'd have white, um, uh, you would have a, a white colored lanyard and would be able to, to pick out who was the most important or who was the, the most, um, uh, who was the speakers uh, within this uh, World Economic Forum um, uh, summit. And then you would have it all the way down to just the cleaners. <laughs> so you would have a, a real um, class sort of uh, a system in place, but they were showing it. They were openly showing it. It wasn't like a, 
it wasn't like oh um, i've got it in my pocket and then i'll show at the door and then walk through it was they had it all on full display everyone could see who was who and so that made it easy for um for the journalists who wanted to ask the elites um these questions and base their content around that they could easily pick out who was important and who wasn't and who was from where and you could see their names in bold so you found people from like i said the who uh wall street journalism um the new york times uh you had people from all sorts and it it was just it was this yeah like i keep saying this strange circle jerk of uh of just elites mm. <laughs> it's, it was odd so odd wow oh so it's like a um, elite social club that they yeah. understand there is a caste within their yeah. society. <laughs> they yeah, but they market certain... it. <sighs> they market it as this summit that they're making amazing progress. They're making change to the world and that um, they're bringing all these technologies and uh, business partners together when really it's a social club. That's what it is, really. It's it's got nothing to do that. It's all a front with this whole um, Klaus Schwab coming on and making big announcements and speeches and saying, "Oh, um, you know, the the history is now turning." Like you said about this this next summit, it's it's fascinating because really they're gophers, is what they are. They're not the real. They're not the real people who are who are in charge of this all. They they're gophers as um. Uh, as some people call them and it's and it's totally totally factual they're not they're not the people that are actually doing the bits in between they're not doing they're not behind the curtain arranging everything they're just the front right and so wow. when you go to these to this summit and even if you report outside of it you will see that it's just for show it's all a celebrity like culture. You had people, influencers, social media influencers, the new celebrity, the neo celebrity, right? These people would have like photos in the street against, you know, you know how you, you would see like the red carpet or the Ritz or uh, the BAFTA awards and they would have um, all the sponsors behind them and all the photographers would, would get up and start taking photos. And it was like a, a real celebrity type culture. You would see that in the street um, wow. against like certain um, backdrops. Uh, you had as well bringing in uh, a Ukraine house. So it was all it was all fitted around Ukraine and it had um, the Russian war crimes museum. And it was it was showing how, you know, Putin is. um is uh, ravaging Ukraine uh, from start to finish, from end to end, and it would show the horrors of that, but not call out Zelensky and his corruption. It had mm. nothing to do with that. And if you would have questioned that, uh, you would have been in serious trouble. Mm. Um, and they would have felt that felt pretty uncomfortable, which they they kind of deserve to feel uncomfortable, to be honest. If you, you need to ask these questions um, with things such as that. Um, so it was fascinating. It was fascinating, um, but it was it was almost sickly. So I, I was glad I managed to get home <laughs> and uh, and be at home. Uh, I would rather be at home, if I'm totally honest, than uh, wow. than endure that personally. Wow. It's just sick. It's hmm. weird. Well, I, I see. And uh, in in the uh, reporting, I think I saw. Uh, from the Rebel News, I think uh, there were po police uh, specifically uh, for World Economic for Forum, correct? Like some of the police had a bat. Could you yes. please tell us what is this all about? So we was confused when we saw that because we started seeing Reuters articles at the time. We started seeing people posting online with screenshots of these badges. Yeah. And uh, it said WEF police or something like that. And we were confused at the, at the start and we were like, wow, are they actually special branches of the of the World Economic Forum? I mean, you know, what's going on? So we interviewed um, 
some police officers were d- that were doing checkpoints um who were making their way to um the the uh, davos and they they explained that it's more of you know how the military would go and do uh, a tour somewhere let's say in afghanistan or iraq or, or wherever and they would be given um a kind of a badge afterwards to say that they've done that tour mm-hmm. they framed it as according to the these other officers they were saying oh no they they just get given a, a patch because they're working within the premises of davos so it's kind of like a just like a badge of honor almost uh which is weird in itself because the the world economic po- uh, forum pays for these badges um and these police officers just wear them as accessories um but looking back now reuters were was quick to say no there's no such thing as a wef police there's no such thing fact check fact check fact check no misinformation and looking back and seeing we know that reuters is a partner with the world economic forum we know that they have an integral partnership together on broadcasting or distributing information as they say so thinking back i'm actually not sure whether whether what the police officers outside of uh, davos told us was strictly true maybe someone has been given a memo i'm not sure i don't i don't 100 know so is there a, a world economic forum police well if we go back if i go back or if other people decide to go back in january to um do some journalism there and there's more of this wef police and there's a new badge it's like an upgrade then maybe because i find it just odd that you would willingly want to wear this this patch that has been bought and paid for by this organization I don't know. I find that really odd. Um, mm. And security, as you know, w- was so high throughout the strip. You had people with with obviously weapons, st- uh, snipers on roof on rooftops of um, uh, stores, pop up stores. Uh, it was you could feel the the tension because you knew that there were some VIPs there. Um, so yeah, is there a World Economic Forum police? I, I, the the real answer is I don't actually know. Looking back, mm-hmm. um, so yeah. Mm. Wow, I see. Okay, then it'll be interesting to see what we would see in in January ne- next next exactly. year. Okay, and okay. Last question for me. Um, overall, uh, what do you think about this Davos conference and? Uh, first of all, what, why did you decide to um, report on this um, issue? Like, for example, in Japan, like our atmosphere here is that if we were to talk about this World Economic Forum or if you mention this name, globalist, then people would say like, oh, this is a dangerous <laughs> topic. It's a dangerous subject. Yes. Right. So especially businessmen, they want to avoid this conversation and they just immediately mm. like to say, oh, they are doing for the goodwill and mm. like like they are not bad people. Uh, or right. Like they, they just wanted to normalize these things. So yeah. um, I think... Um, in Japan, we need to start, um, what should I say, like, create an atmosphere that it is okay to discuss this as an issue. Mm. <laughs> so ha, for, I, I want to ask you this. Uh, so what was the occasion that you started to think that this is an issue? Yes. Um, I... Initially, I got into the subject because there was so much to be said and there's so much to look at with this organization. It's a difficult one because this organization, this anti-human organization, has actually been around for a long time. But we only started hearing about them really in 2014. 
that was the earliest that, that a lot of people heard about um the world economic forum i i'm quite late to the party i only heard about them sort of mid 2020 late 2020 when when corona was was really in full swing and the narrative was put in place um for that i i'd everything seemed to have come back to them like there was a lot of things that were that were traced back to them whether it be um partnerships whether it be um specific things these people would say for example the you'll own nothing that done that went everywhere and everyone was like hang on a minute what abolishing private property what what are you on about that sounds communist to me and then start you start digging in they start saying other crazy stuff and then you start seeing who's at play you you've got klaus schwab who you start to hear about everywhere uh bill gates as well who did attend the last conference um these people these players on a chessboard they're just they're moving up and down the board and you can see it happening in real time and you can see it openly so that's the thing this isn't some this isn't some secretive organization whilst they are doing things behind the curtain and we me you no other journalist would be able to find out unless you were an insider and these front men klaus schwab bill gates whoever uh yuval noah harari all of these people they're just they're they're fronts they're gophers they have they have their own intrinsic way of trying to push a, push a message across they've got the funding they've got the money um but there are other people at play so this is what's interesting about this subject because everything that you see narrative wise climate change covid all of these narratives ukraine as well all link back to this organization and it's not something that you can bring out from air. They are all saying it on their website. The World Economic Forum makes it clear where they stand with things. They make it clear on what agenda they want to push with sustainability, with Agenda 2030, that that um, date as well. That date keeps coming back, 2030 or 2050, carbon neutral by 2050 or um climate change uh net zero by 2030 you see this come back again and again and again so how i got into it was because of them <laughs> they were the ones they were the ones saying hey look at us we're doing this thing 2030 sustainable development okay well let me have a look let me see what you're saying um no this is mental this is this is beyond me this is this is awful this is anti-human so it was actually them that got me into chatting about them because i didn't like what they were saying and doing now now in america canada um and the uk the topic of the world economic forum and globalism is becoming a mainstream topic which is very good it's very, very good that it's becoming mainstream because it means more people want to come to the table and have a discussion. It means more people want to come and give their say and give their piece. And you'll find that when you find a few people that agree with some of the stuff the WEF says or does, you'll find that a majority doesn't add up and doesn't look good at all for them. So so I think it's important that people keep having this this discussion about the World Economic Forum and to answer your question of um why did I decide to go to Davos um it was mainly because I had been looking into this anti-human organization for quite a while and reading and looking up what what they were saying doing videos doing reports about what it is that they the message that they were trying to push out and showing people that you can push back against it i thought it was only right for me to actually be on the globalists doorstep and make reports about their their summits 
and to show that it was all about regaining trust that yes they know that the public does not trust them they know because the things that they are saying are so in incomprehensibly evil in the long run and this talk about overpopulation and <laughs> curbing this over overpopulation crisis and all things from mass immigration to climate change to all of these subjects we know what agenda that they are pushing and so it was only right for me to have gone to this uh this summit to report outside i wouldn't have wanted to gone it i wouldn't have wanted to go in and uh and report on it i think being outside being with um other independent journalists being with uh people surrounded by people who want to talk about this strange and anti-human organiz organization was was comforting but i was glad to have come home so you know all in all um yeah i went there because it felt right it felt like i felt like it was a duty almost to go there and speak about what was happening mm. Okay, thank you very much uh, for uh, sharing your experience. And I hope you, you keep uh, doing great work and hope to thank see you, you, you again too. somewhere. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely catch up in real life at some point. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah, so we are here in the Netherlands to cover the Farmer Rebellion which we have been reporting about the Dutch uprising from the farmers here in the Netherlands. We've set up a page uh, where you can follow the reports 